This is the Let the Port Show on the Fun Seekers Radio Network. The toll-free lines are now open at 1-800-572-TALK. That's 1-800-572-8255. And now, here's Let the Port. Well, good morning, Fun Seekers. Hi, y'all out there in Radio Land. Uh, March is slipping away. You know, today's March the 12th. My goodness. Slip it away, slip it away. We're going to have a good time today, but let me talk to you about the, about the weather. They, they keep saying it's going to start to rain and rain about three days, and that's still in the forecast, but I don't know when it's going to start to rain. The last thing I heard, sometime today over most of our Southland, so uh, I don't know. <laughs> may rain today, but it probably won't, that kind of thing. But let me tell you what I want to talk about. This is something we've never done before. Some stuff I want you to tell me, and some of these things have answers, and some don't. But we'll work it out together. And uh, I don't know which one that you can look up uh, on your computer, almost all of them, I guess. But uh, I've got about 10 or 12 things I'd like to know about. And here they, and here they are. Write these down and call me. Or call me and then write them down. I don't care. The tallest cowboy. Or the tallest cowboy. I don't know. I don't know which one's the tallest. I know the, I know some tall ones, but I don't know which one's the tallest. Same with the shortest cowboy. I don't know who the shortest cowboy was either. I mean, when I say that, I mean in movies or television. Best bought milkshake. Best bought milkshake. So you make can make them at home better than this, but I want to know the best place to go to get a good bought milkshake. The best automatic washing machine. I know what you're saying. That's a matter of opinion. And it is. And it's what I want, your opinion. I want to know the approximate date, or maybe the exact date if you know it, uh, of the first home ice maker. First ice maker put in your refrigerator. That uh, we need to build a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, build a statue to the guy that did that because that's a great invention, boy. I, I did hate I did hate those ice cube makers. You know the ones? Woo! Hated them. Uh, the first automobile air conditioner, the first automobile to come out with an air conditioner. Who was that? I don't know. Don't know. Wish, wish you'd tell me. Who invented the motorcycle? There again, uh, you can tell me. I don't know. Who was the tallest president? Tallest president. Who invented toothpaste? Whoever it was, another statue needs to be built to. When did the, about, about when did the first commercial deodorant come out? Another, another, <laughs> oh, another statue. And then somebody, I want somebody to give me a good a cucumber recipe. If there is on the continent a good one, I'd like to hear about it. So you got them? Going to be fun now. I want you to jump in here and let's do this. Tallest cowboy, the shortest cowboy, the best bought milkshake, the best uh, automatic washer, the first home ice maker I'd like to know who did it and what by what year the first automobile air conditioner that that'll be easy who invented the motorcycle I don't think that'll be too easy tallest president who invented toothpaste a first commercial deodorant and a good recipe using the cucumbers got it all right one eight hundred five seven two eight two five five did it and let know both of us here ready to talk to you. So jump in here and join us on the more than wonderful Fun Seekers Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, he's been called the Mark Twain of this generation, Mr. Louis Grizzard. 
Hey there, it's Denny Ainsworth. I have a very few remaining Lewis Resort CDs. The Good Will Tour from Moreland to Moscow. So you can get one for your Lewis fan by sending $14 to Denny Ainsworth, Post Office Box 49, 2260, Lawrenceville, Georgia, 30049. That's $14, including shipping and handling, to Denny Ainsworth, Post Office Box 49, 2260, Lawrenceville, Georgia, 30049. Lewis Resort. From Morgan to Moscow. I wish my three ex wives could have heard that. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. Let's go to Somerset, Kentucky, and talk to the original Bob on the radio. Hello, Bob. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. I just wish it'd get prettier here. We're going to have maybe a, a mix of uh, rain and snow here today. Oh boy, y'all just got rid of the snow, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, and and oh. uh, but 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 it's March and it'll be over pretty soon. Um, All right, good. Uh, I think I'm not sure about this. But it's got to be between Cadillac and Packard on the uh, the car air conditioning. Maybe Packard okay, about first. What, about what year would you think? Uh, probably uh, around 1937 or 38, I would think. Very interesting. I, I that's I'm not an expert on this, but that's got to be close. I think you I think you're right on the makes on the Cadillac or Packard. I think they. Obviously, those were the two big cars of their era here. I'm American cars, and, and I bet it's one of those two, but I don't know. Well, uh, if you got somebody that's a listener that's an Undertaker, they could probably tell you because they were <laughs> pretty big on Packards. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember there was one. There's one funeral home in Somerset, long gone, that had a uh, that had a Packard hearse. Uh, even back in the 60s, they didn't use it. It was just p- back in a garage somewhere, but it was kind of a museum piece, and I always wondered what happened to that. I knew a guy had a, had a uh, uh, Packard coupe, and I thought to myself, that guy must be a super billionaire. I, I, <laughs> yeah. And it was an expensive car, but I, I remember the car well, and and the guy was a kind of a real, very romantic figure. You know, He was a good-looking guy with a mustache and... Always wore a three-piece suit, and I thought, boy, five, five, I had a package. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to, to milkshake, um, the best current milkshake, I think, now, now the best milkshake I ever remember was uh, there was a drugstore called Tibbles that was about two doors down from the uh, courthouse in Somerset when I was a kid, and that was our yeah. big hangout, and uh, uh, they used, uh, their ice cream was seal test. And uh, it was just incredible how good their uh, milkshakes or malts, either one, were. But now, currently, my favorite is uh, the uh, Steak and Shake uh, chocolate milkshake. I, that's almost okay. an emotional experience to me. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good. One. Uh, check on the check on the crystal. Y'all have crystals up there? Oh yeah. Uh, check check on the crystal. Buy, buy, buy a crystal milkshake. Really good. You'll love it. Uh, how about uh, how about Sonic? Is it in, are they okay or have you? I, I haven't had one at the Sonic. Okay, hadn't had one there. I, I hadn't either, but uh, uh, a lot a lot of people are uh, using that. There is. Uh, uh, I, I like to make my own. Yeah, me too. And uh, you know, I just like them just so thick that you almost get a brain freeze. Well, when I was a when I was a milkshake, and I when I was a uh, working behind that counter, uh, and made my own. I made it. I knew it was just right when the machine you put it in to mix it would go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 took, took it. Took it a minute to get started, and I knew I had to thick it up. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something funny on my dad. My my dad ha- has. Uh, well, he's still living. He's an old old man, but he has. Uh, 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 a real high metabolism, even for even now, and uh, he he was just like an eating machine. And my mom always fixed a big lunch. I mean, just uh, at at lunchtime, and he deeply about popped. And and uh, the little neighborhood girl 
worked at a dry cleaner's next to the local Dairy Queen. And uh, one day uh, she said to my mom, she called him my dad by name, said, do you know that he stops and gets him a milkshake every day on the way back from lunch? <laughs> and, <laughs> and my mom found that out, and it just uh-huh. turned around. <laughs> because because it was like you know, hey, I w- I'm underfeeding him. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh yeah, that's and uh, and uh, he was uh, years or two ago. He had had some real health problems, and uh, he was in the nursing home for a while here. And uh, so uh, he was still eating good. And my wife said, "Get him a better Scotch milkshake." And boy, he'd about attack me for that better Scotch milkshake, a big one. He'd have that sucker <laughs> drunk. And him about ninety years old in in a good six minutes. Uh, chug a lug in a milkshake. <laughs> yeah. So I, I come, but you know, let me tell you how that works. My dad worked was was raised on a farm, and the doctor said he had amazing bones for a man his age, and it mm-hmm. came from years of milk drinking. I'll tell you what, the Dairy Association ought to plug that. Oh, I I, I got a same, a same story. A guy that I know well, he's a distant relative. Dove into a, a shallow end of a lake that didn't that he didn't know that was that shallow, and just mangled his arm, and they told him he would never uh, be able to use that arm, any, you know, with any degree of success. But he was a, a two a two glass of milk a day man every day. I'm two two glass per meal, and uh, that arm that arm healed up and as good as new today. I tell you what, let's hear it for old Bossy, huh? All right, <laughs> I gotta go, big okay, boy. Have a good day. All right, one eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. More conversation right after this. Stay with us. Talk to you in a while. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Lud? Good. I'm behaving myself, and I hope you are. I am. All right. Uh, the man who invented the motorcycle was named Daimler. Okay, as in as in Daimler Chrysler. Uh huh. And it was about 1885. You sound like you were there. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take that as the correct answer because you, you never have told me wrong, I don't think. Thank you. You be sweet. I'll talk to you. Okay. Bye-bye. Daimler, Daimler Chrysler Plymouth, yeah. He did all right. <laughs> Just had a little few years to go. Let's talk to my friend Aubrey. Aubrey, how you doing, big boy? Uh, good morning, Ludlow. I got to hurry because we're going to take the dog to the vet and get her... Uh, yearly medicine and get some spots checked out. I wanted to take an educated guess on the uh, tallest cowboy. Okay. I wanted to say James Arnez. You know, you, you may be right. I'm not going to argue with that. But you may be right, but I think I know another one who was taller. Uh-oh. Well, okay. Well, we'll put, we'll put I, that one out. <laughs> but No, no. You very well may be correct. I'm not calling you wrong on that because uh, I don't know, but I hope somebody... If if Arnest is not the tallest, he's one of the tallest. Because you know John Wayne was su- supposed to be uh, his character, but he introduced James Arnest. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. Uh, um, and the, the smallest cowboy, I would have to say, you remember the movie The Cowboys with John Wayne? Yeah. I would have to say one of the little little boys on there. <laughs> okay. He was a cow. They were all cowboys. <laughs> I know it. I know. It. You're right about that. Yeah. So I'd have to say one of the smallest ones would be one of the cowboys off that movie. Okay. All right. I gotta go. I'll see you later. Go go do something. I'll talk to you. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. As I know, Aubrey <laughs> started off the con- the conversation by saying he uh, didn't have time to talk. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. Let me go over these again. And uh, I, I don't know about the tallest cowboy. I don't I don't know about some of the, several of these. Uh, I'm depending on you. James Arnest, a very tall guy, a very tall guy, but there have been a lot of tall cowboys. And I think I know one taller than James Arnest. We'll talk about it. Uh, the shortest cowboy, uh, there's two or three, two or three that might fit into that category. Uh, for, uh, for instance, uh, Alan Ladd, very short, little guy. Uh, Bob Steele, had to have a ladder to get on his horse, almost. Uh, James Cagney. Another one. I think Cagney was probably taller than those two, but in any event, when you get when you get to those, uh, I think it's, that's going to be our, our shortest cowboy. Uh, who made any difference in, in movies? And uh, best bought milkshake. We've had one nominee. Best washer. The first home ice maker. Does anybody know anything about that? Give me a call. The first. Uh, 
automobile air conditioner. We've had a guest at that, but it was a guest. We have Packard's been guest. And we know now who invented the motorcycle. The tallest president. Bunch of them. Let's talk to my buddy Mike Fright on the radio. Hello, Michael. Good morning, sir. How you doing? Doing fine. Got this Mac McIntyre 697C revved up. You pedaled it right, pedaled it right to the end of the line, did you? Yes, sir. All right, tell well, me about it. I was on that uh, Packard, and I believe the, according to this computer, the year was 1939. 39 Packard. Well, I knew for sure that it was one of the big luxury cars, and Packard was certainly that. Uh, and 1939 sounds about right, I guess. That's wonderful. Did, and you, you put your check out on the computer? Yes, sir. All right, good. Good. Uh, I got several. Let me let's see. Here's one that might be difficult for people to find. Uh, the first deodorant, first commercial deodorant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was uh, 1888 by <laughs> an unknown Philadelphia uh, inventor. Uh, I knew he was. Probably they don't know who, don't know who he was, but they, they called it Mum. M U M. I remember Mum. Mum was a. Uh, Around for many, many years, many, many years. That's very interesting. But, uh, you know, homemade stuff goes way, way, way back. Yeah. I know. I was on an airplane one time <laughs> going to Europe. And the guy, <laughs> there was a guy stood over me while he put his took his coat off, suit coat, and put it in the overhead. I thought I was going to die. He was... <laughs> He was an Italian guy, and wow, had never had a shower in his life. I know. Oh, it was awful, just awful. I was Six Flags one year in the line with the screen machine. My, my son, uh, I, I don't go no more because I don't have any kids to take. Uh, yeah. He already pay me to go now, but he was about, <laughs> I don't know, nine or ten. And you know how those lines wind back and forth, back and forth. Right. And there was some lady there from India or somewhere. I don't think she'd ever had a bath in her life, let low. Uh, well, we were right that, behind them. We left the gap about 30 feet, and everybody they passed by, man, they were all, it was just, not, you know, it was hot, and yeah. it, was just, oh, it was awful. If you travel very much, you soon learn that America's maybe the only place in the world where we take showers every day. Right. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you don't run into that everywhere. I guess everybody, I guess you get used to it. I, but I sure would hate to. <laughs> I would too. I, I I don't know. I don't know how you. I don't how you go to, okay. how you go to bed? At, how you go to bed at night? That filthy, you know. <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't think that old gal could smell any worse if she'd been dead a couple of weeks. And it was her. it was terrible. Bless her heart. <laughs> 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 I gotta go, big boy. You take care of yourself. All right, good show. Bye bye. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. Join us. Blue willow in. I want you to think about that when the time comes and it's going to come and you're going to want some good, authentic southern cooking. Your mind's going to race back to your mama's table or your mind's going to race to the the church bazaars and that sort of thing where you got the good fried chicken and everything else is at the blue willow in. Just the way you remember the pork chops, the roast beef, every vegetable on the planet, uh, fish, hush puppies, got the picture, everything. Even got your favorite bread. I mean, from corn, from cornbread to, to muffins, to, they got it, they got it all there, guy. Go on to the desserts where you're going to find all the desserts, cakes, pies, what have you. And you're also going to find uh, the South's favorite dessert, and that's banana pudding. All of that and a lot more at the Blue Willow Inn. Now, if you're going to go down there, I advise you to, uh, uh, to not eat for about a week or 10 days before you go because the folks are going to fill you up.
best places I know, gang. Blue Willow Inn, Social Circle, Georgia. You tell them Ludlow sent you. Hey there, this is Denny Ainsworth. My wife Patricia and I, we were in the market for a new vehicle. And what we did is we shopped around and around and around. And our search led us to, well, my new favorite place, World Toyota Scion in Atlanta, Georgia. And you do the same thing I did. I shopped around, I checked the internet and all over the place. And I looked at their website at www.worldtoyota.com and then I gave them a call and paid them a visit. But I chose these folks because they gave me the best deal and with more value than all the other dealerships that I visited. And you can trust me when I tell you that you're not going to find anyone that will treat you any better or with any more respect than the folks at World Toyota. I mean, heck, the general manager will give you a cell phone number and actually respond to your call. <laughs> And right now, the annual March Mania event is going on at World Toyota Scion of Atlanta. 3,000 new Toyotas on sale with ridiculously low prices and payments. Zero percent financing available on some models. There's also a huge selection of used vehicles priced under $10,000. Now, here's a big deal an award. Just ask any Toyota dealer about why it's a coveted award, and they'll tell you. It's the number one Toyota dealership in the big old town of Atlanta for a couple of months in a row, and their service department is also rated number one in Atlanta. Service you can trust from professional technicians who know every nut, bolt, and circuit on today's high-tech vehicles. Visit them online at www.worldtoyota.com or in person at 5800 Peachtree Industrial Boulevard just inside Interstate 285 in Atlanta, Georgia. Take it from me, Denny Gainsworth. I trust them, and you can too. World Toyota Scion of Atlanta. to Somerset, Kentucky, and talk to my buddy Daryl on the radio. Daryl, how you doing? Good morning, Ludlow. How are you? I'm fine, big boy. You okay? I'm doing just fine, sir. Good. Uh, your shortest cowboy, I saw a movie last night that might, well, might answer that question. Okay. Remember High Plains Drifter? <laughs> Talk about the midget, don't you? <laughs> yeah, so if you want to count him, that, that could be the smallest cowboy. Uh, you're exactly right, and I don't see how we can overlook that cowboy. Uh, <laughs> he, was, he was pretty much of a saloon rat in that movie, though, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was. I mean, he was. He was the pivot in that movie because yeah. he shot the guy in the back that was going to shoot Eastwood in the back. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I don't know. I, I think he, I think his name was Billy Barty. I'm not sure, but uh, he worked a lot. He worked a lot. Yes, he did. He uh, did. I think any time any time he called a roll call for a midget, they put him on. It sure, surely, uh, truly did. Now, the tallest cowboy. Uh, I got two choices. Okay, good. One, I agree with the previous caller who said James Arness because he was definitely up there in height. Oh, no question. The second one, Seth Parker. Oh, good choice. Good choice. He played Daniel Boone as well as Davy Crockett. Right. So, let, me, let me mention another one to you. Okay. Because here, here's my choice, and I may be soaking wet. Do you remember Rod Cameron? Uh, the High Chaparral. No, no. Rod Cameron oh, was a... Mitchell. Yeah. Rod Cameron was a, a real tall cowboy. It was in a, a lot of movies, uh, most, mostly color movies. He didn't make much black and white. And, and he was just really towered over everybody else. But but I may be wrong. Arnest may be. I'm like you. Arnest may be the one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. But then another. One, you know what? Another one has come to mind. Who? The, and it's an Eastwood movie also. Remember Pale Rider? Yeah. 
the tall, tall fellow who played Jaws in those James Bond movies. He played in that movie. Oh, movie. yeah. Richard, yeah, R Richard Keel. I interviewed him one time live and in person. I should have thought, did he ever, yeah, I guess he did some cowboys, didn't he? Yeah, but that was the only time I've seen him in a cowboy picture was in Pale Rider. All right, well, he, yeah, he would, uh, i tell you what else he was in. He was in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. That's right. That's right, he was. Yeah, we got our tallest cowboy because he was about 12 foot 11, wasn't he? He was a big, a big guy. He was a tall drink of water. Yeah. He sure yeah. Was. Now, I, well, anyway, Ludlow, I got to run. Go do it, Daryl. Go do it, buddy. I'll talk to you. Yeah, I'll see you, see you real soon. I know it's been a while since you heard from me. All uh, right. You, you get on that phone on a regular basis. We love it. All righty. Okay, pal. Take, take care of yourself. 1-800-572-8255 is our number. Uh, yeah, that guy's a pituitary giant. And I, th I think he's, I, is he the one that played Jaws, played, and in, in not, not, the, not the shark, but he played Jaws in a James Bond movie, James, James Bond movie. All right. That's good stuff. Jimmy in the Grovetown, uh, Georgia. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Hey, Hello. buddy. You, yeah, you there? Hey, you there? Are you there? Am I here? I'm here and you're there. Yeah, we got that I'm, down. I, I, I got a fairly new telephone. It does funny things. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's not my fault. It's the telephone's fault. I got you. And I ain't got my grandkids here to show me how to push a button. Uh. <laughs> if, you can, if you can count the hat, Hopalong Castor was on up there because, you know, he had a tall hat. Yeah, if you count the hat, he was right there. And Roy Rogers did, too. As a matter of fact, whenever I see a... Arby's, I think about Roy Rogers because they still got that logo with a cowboy hat sticking yeah. with the pie like that. You know, if we count the hat, wouldn't Hoss Cartwright have it? He had a big hat. What's that? I say if we count the hat, wouldn't Hoss Cartwright be number one? Yeah, he, he would have to be because yeah. he was enough there to start with. Yeah. Um, you, uh, you mentioned Rod Cameron. Didn't he almost always play with the Von DiCarlo in the movie? Yeah. That's they came was, along. They came along at the same time. They must have because I, every movie I remember seeing with him in there, she was in. I think she made some without him, but uh, yeah, uh, that was just a natural. And um, and boy, what a beauty she was! Whew. She was something else, wasn't she? Yeah, she wasn't as pretty when she got old and played in that monster movie. Uh, who was though? <laughs> <laughs> she done ugly somebody. Uh -huh. You know. Um, the uh, shortest cowboy other than, other than midget, Bob Steele, was pretty far down, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he was. He was in the he was in the bottom three. <laughs> yeah, you know, he would beat this old fat man with a black mustache. He'd beat him up nearly every move, and he'd put his head down and hit him in the stomach real fast. <laughs> and I didn't know until uh, I started watching some Mavericks on one of those hundred and sixty something. Channel One Sixty, whatever it is. Yeah, uh, he played a bad guy later on. Well, a lot of them. He was in a couple of Bogart movies as a, as a bad gangster. Uh, I had no idea. I thought he was a hero, but I think it was after he was a cowboy that he was a, a villain. Later yeah. That's a pretty good one, too, didn't he? He, he did make a good one. did make a good one. Yeah, he did make a good one. And he was only interested in the paycheck, and that's what he said. He'd take any role they offered him. He, he was interested in what? A paycheck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of those fellas felt the way. You know, uh, we went to uh, Nashville, Tennessee one time and had a tour, and I found out if you go on a tour with seven different people at the same place, you might get seven different uh, uh, stories about somebody. But yeah. this one said that uh, took, took us by uh, um, Tex Ritter's house, and, and he said that, that the most Tex Ritter ever got for making a movie was $7,000. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that back then that they didn't uh, they didn't spend as much money. I don't give them twenty million dollars to make a movie like they do nowadays. Yeah. Well, but and also don't forget he would he did the singing on a lot of things too. He introduced a lot of shows with his singing. Uh. So so he uh, plus he did he did all the singing for High Noon. Yeah. He 
got a very distinctive voice. Well, right, he did. I loved his voice. I, I do. He had a song that made no sense in the world. It's called Green Grow the Lilacs. <laughs> you ever listen to the song? Uh, yeah, that's the that's a first Spanish American War song. It's a it's a fine song, but it just it, it don't make any sense in the world. If I knew something about who wrote it and why, it might. But to my, well, let me tell you. Let me tell you what it what it'll mean more to you. Uh, during the during this, the uh, the war down there, the Mexicans used to listen to the American troops at night sitting around the campfire singing "Green Girl the Lilacs." That's the reason they started to call them Gringos. Huh? That's that's where they got it, and, well, and that and it hangs on till this day. So, ain't you ain't you glad you called? <laughs> How the hell do you know everything that you know? I, I lie about a lot of it, but uh, that's the truth. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I don't know. I just got to take a mind that kind of holds on to useless facts, you know. Well, I'm, I do a little bit of that myself, but I never did know that. That um, It says change the green lilacs to the red, white, and blue, so I guess it's got something to do with patriotism. And yeah. yeah, well, the soldiers did thought it did, and that's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, me too. And that was the Spanish-American War. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be well, I'm glad I called you. <laughs> okay, buddy. You take care of yourself. Have a great day. You do the same. Talk to you I'll, later. I'll talk to you. Bye-bye. one 800 is, is uh, our number. Didn't it? We that late for us. What? Boy, am I. Is my face red. We'll be right back. Is the IRS after you? Don't have the money to pay them? Feel like there's nowhere to turn? If you owe the IRS back taxes of $10,000 or more, you need aggressive representation. Call now and speak to one of our tax attorneys, enrolled agents, or tax professionals that specialize in tax liens, back taxes, tax debt, wage garnishment, and collections. We negotiate with the IRS so you don't have to. We've settled millions of dollars in back taxes for a fraction of the cost. Find the peace of mind knowing the IRS will not be knocking on your door. Protect your home, business, and family today. Call IRS Tax Advisors, and if you're one of the first 50 callers, we'll give you a free, no-obligation consultation. This single telephone call with one of our tax attorneys, enrolled agents, or tax professionals could save you thousands. Call IRS Tax Advisors at 800-390-8680. That's 800-390-8680. Call 800-390-8680. That's 800-390-8680. Let me tell the story, I can tell it all About the mountain boy who ran a legal alcohol His daddy made the whiskey, son he drove the load When his engine roared, they called the highway thunder road Sometimes into Asheville, sometimes Memphis town The revenuers chased him, but they couldn't run him down Each time they thought they had him, his engine would explode He'd go by like they were standing still on Thunder Road. And there was thunder, thunder over Thunder Road. All right, 1 800 572 8255. Go to Thompson, Georgia, and talk to my buddy Al on the radio. Hello, Al. Good morning there, little O. How you doing, big guy? I'm doing good for an old man. Hey, right. uh, I may have some information on the shortest cowboy. Okay. And apparently his name was Buzz Barton. <laughs> Back in the 1920s and 1930s, and he was—they say he was about five foot two inches tall. Uh huh. Buzz Barton. Buzz Barton, and he has apparently has a reputation of being the shortest cowboy. Now, the second shortest cowboy, and I uh, wondered why he wasn't the first shortest cowboy, but is a guy named Zacchaeus McKee, and uh, he played in a couple of westerns called The Mild Mild West. <laughs> and yeah, I can get it for you wholesale. Uh huh. <laughs> now I was looking up the world's tallest cowboy, and I didn't find one uh, reference, easy reference. But they they say that the world the world's tallest cowboy is Big Tex. Big Tex. And uh, he's apparently a statue at the Greater. Texas State Fair, he stands 52 feet tall. Uh-huh. Now, if that were a real person, he would be the tallest cowboy. He'd be a son of a gun, yeah. Yes, he would, but remember those names, Buzz Barton and Zacchaeus McKee. I, I will. I will never forget those. 
<laughs> and if this ever comes up again, boy, I'm going to call you. We'll, we'll be ready for you. <laughs> well, you have a good one, big boy. Okay. <laughs> okay, my friend, I'll talk to you. Oh, okay. Bye-bye. A definite wild man. We're at Kentucky. Hello, sweet Louise. How you doing? Good morning. I'm doing great. Good. Um, the tallest president that we had so far is Abraham Lincoln, and he stood at six foot four. Okay. Now, did you look that up? Yes, I did. Okay. Good because I knew it was. I thought it was a, a tie between Lyndon Johnson and Abraham Lincoln, or close to a tie. Does it, does it say how, how tall Johnson was? No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't look that. But now it okay. says that so far that he was the tallest one, six foot four. Okay. And on your air conditioner um, for the the Nash Motor Company uh, in 1939 was the first that had the air conditioner. Nash, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I found That's... some interesting things along the way, and I thought, well, I'll just throw these in. Um, the first electric starter was in 1912 on the Cadillacs. Well, that was a great day. And <laughs> <laughs> the flashing turn signals that we have in our vehicle is 1935. So I found some interesting things when I was a... Very, that, very, that's very interesting because those, those turn signals didn't really take off in popularity until the 50s. Yes, that's true. Yeah, that's very the interesting. The first ones was in 35. Very, very interesting. All right, my friend. It's good talking to you. Okay, take care now. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a tie. We have a conflict here between Packard and Nash for the for the first air conditioner. What do you think? Got a nominee? 1-800-572-8255. Tell me that some of the things I need to know, particularly about the ice maker. I want to know about that. Things you can tell me. Jump in here and join us. You listen to the more than wonderful Fun Seekers Radio Network. Call me. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. Good song, old song. Good song. Let me tell you what we're doing. If you just joined us, and I bet you you did, uh, a lot of you, you sons of guns. We want to know some of these things. I know the answers to, and some things, some of them I don't. The tallest cowboy. We don't know that yet. We've had so many nominees about that. A couple of pituitary giants, but that don't count. I'm talking about cowboys you recognize by name. You know that. Shortest cowboy, we haven't got settled on that. Best bought milkshakes, we've had a couple of nominees, but uh, we haven't arrived at a winner yet. Any anybody to, to tell me what the best washer is, automatic washing machine is? And uh, the first home ice maker, who put that out, and in what year? I'd be interested in knowing that because I. I think that a great person invented that. I am so sick of, uh, and it was at the time, so sick of uh, uh, the cubes in the, in the trays. Ooh, you do do lucky if you if you didn't get water on you or ice in your pocket or something when you started to open one of those things up. They were just nasty. I hated them. Uh, and the first the first automobile air, air conditioner. We got a tie on that one between Nash and Packard, I think for the same year, 39. And we, uh, we, we found out who invented the motorcycle. Uh, and I think we found out who the tallest president was. If Lincoln was taller than uh, Lyndon Johnson, I'm going to put that as a correct. Uh, who invented toothpaste? And I settled for the country on that. Who invented toothpaste? And... Uh, First commercial deodorant was in the United States in the 1800s. No name is available. 
and uh, nobody nobody has called in with any kind of cucumber recipe. I just threw that one in because I thought it would interest a lot of you good cooks out there. So that's what, that's what we're talking about. And some of them I know the answer to, and some of them I don't. Uh, most of them I don't. I, I had no idea about uh, about Nash and Packard. They were both luxury cars of their day, as was a Cadillac. But they apparently beat the Cadillac to the air conditioning. But it didn't come, it didn't become popular till a lot longer than that because the complaint I heard about the early air conditioners was the sun coming through your window nullified it. Now, I never found that to be the case. I had one in about 1962, I guess 63 maybe. And uh, I, didn't, I never found that the case. I found out if it had a little air conditioner under the under the dashboard, when you fired that bad boy off, it, it might take a little while sometime, but it, it got the job done. So if you got computers and you want to look up some of these, that'll be good. Tallest cowboy, shortest cowboy, best bought milkshake. We're getting to a matter of opinion on, on that one. That's good. Best washer, another matter of opinion. First home ice maker. I'm talking about the one in your refrigerator. And uh, the first auto air conditioner, we're going to fight about that, I guess. Tallest president, I think we got that. I think she's right. Uh, I think she, it's close, but I think I think Lincoln was taller than Lyndon Johnson. And then some was it right in there. She was a tall lady in her day. Hello, and then some. How you doing? Hello, a- sir. A- Hello, Ann. How you doing? Well, I'm doing just fine. I just Good. want to tell you that... I don't know that it's the best washer in the world, but the one I'm using, I mean, I bought mine 21 years ago, and it's a GE, and I've never one time had the first thing ever had to be done to it. Now, I know that people have probably kept them longer than 21 years, but that's just as long as I've had it. Well, 21 (laughs) 21 years is probably pushing a a washing machine record, I would think. Well, it may be, but it has... Never, ever one time had the first thing wrong with it. Well, I'm just thrilled to death with it. And the dryer has, uh, the only thing I've had to have done with it is, uh, you know, clean out some of the lint that had had the top of it, I mean, the front of it taken off and kind of uh, vacuum out the lint. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's never stopped on me either. So I'm just thrilled to death with both of them. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna put down. I'm gonna put down till, till somebody calls better. I'm gonna put down the twenty tw- twenty one uh, years. Twenty one year old GE. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now I'll probably have to replace them both tomorrow, or since I said that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm afraid you're right. You, you have jinxed them both, <laughs> and not on, not only that, but your car air conditioner will fail too. You. <laughs> well, I don't doubt that a bit either. <laughs> That's all I've got. <laughs> All right, you take care. Call us again. We love it. I will. Okay. Bye-bye. 1-800-572-8255 is our number. Don't forget, gang, tomorrow uh, is Friday, and that means it is catch-up day. So what you need to do is uh, hang low and uh, give me a call tomorrow, anytime during the day, talk about anything you want to talk about. Okay? We'll be right back. Stay with us. And we took off with Gus. Soon we were doing 90, must have left him in the dust. When I peeked in the mirror of my car, I couldn't believe my eyes. The little Nash Rammer was right behind, I think that guy could fly. Beep, 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 his horn went beep, beep, beep. Now we're doing 110, this certainly was a race. For a Rambler to pass a caddy would be a big disgrace. The guy must have wanted to pass me out as he kept on tooting his horn. I'll show him that a Cadillac is not a car to scorn. Beep, 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 beep. his arm went beep, 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 beep. Now we're doing 120 as fast as I could go. The Rambler pulled alongside of me as if we're going slow. The fella rolled down his window and yelled for me to hear, Hey buddy, how can I get this car out of second gear? <laughs>
This is the Let No Port Show on the Fun Seekers Radio Network. Let No Show brought to you in part by World Toyota Scion of Atlanta, by the Blue Willow Inn, and by Air Tran Airways. The toll free lines are now open at 1 800 572 TALK. That's 1 800 572 8255. And now, here's Blood No Porch. Oh, welcome back and another good morning, gang. Glad you're still here. Having a good time, having a good time. Doing a thing today that we've never done before. <clears throat> I want to ask you some questions that I don't know the answer to. Uh, and I'm going to depend on you to know the answer or, or look it up. Uh, we, we're getting close on some of these. The uh, tallest cowboy, I don't mean the guys, the two, the two or three guys who were pituitary giants. I'm talking about folks we would recognize as cowboy actors or the uh, you know the you know the ones I'm talking about. You see them every Saturday at the picture show. And same with the shortest cowboy. I don't mean midgets. I mean the shortest cowboy, like uh, Bob Steele or Alan Ladd or that crowd. You know what I'm talking about. Best bought milkshake. None of them out of opinion, but I love it. Best bought milkshake. Where do you think you got to go to get that? I bet you don't know, and I, I don't either. But I'm willing to try. How about this? The best washer. We've had one that was 21 years old. Anybody got one older than that? That's given no trouble. And I want to know about the first home ice maker. That you made it in your house. Automatic ice maker. You made it in your house. What year did that come out? And, and what was the uh, mankind? Uh, first automobile air conditioner. We got a tie. We got folks saying... Nash, and uh, as well as Packard. Packard seems more likely to me, but I don't know. Somebody looked up uh, Nash in some place, and that says Nash was was the first. Uh, tallest president, I think we decided that was Abraham Lincoln, followed closely by Lyndon Johnson. Who invented toothpaste? And I'm, I'll take the country. That's a tough one. And we've already found out that the first commercial deodorant uh, was mum, and it uh, it was uh, in the 1800s in the, in the U.S. And we still don't have anybody with any kind of <laughs> cucumber recipe available to them. So that's what we're doing. And a lot of those are matters of opinion, but we can we can enjoy them all. So jump in here and join us. Like some first time callers on these, because you can't be wrong. It's just a matter of opinion on some of them. I have a request for one more, Lud. Okay. I would like to know when the dimmer switch came off the floorboard because you have often said that's when the world pretty much went to hell in the handbasket. Yeah, yeah that's, that was that was a signal of the downswing yeah. of humanity. Yeah, but uh, to narrow that down, I'd appreciate it. I, you know, only thing I remember for sure is we uh, we sold stole that idea from the Volkswagen. Mm-hmm. You know, Volkswagen didn't have room it's true. <laughs> for, for a double switch, so they put it on. <laughs> and uh, I don't. I, I would think. I'm guess, guessing I didn't even. I would think the early, late, later early six, late sixties. Late sixties. Yeah, that's that's, that that's about right. See, I always had such old cars. That, you know. Yeah. My first one, you know, was always much older than. I mean, the several first several cars I had was. Uh, yeah. So old, by the time I got them, they still had dimmer switches on them. <laughs> well, that's the way God intended. Well, on the floorboard, I mean. Yeah, that, that's the way the Lord intended. That, yeah, that, that little thing down there, you could look at it and tell it was a dimmer switch. <laughs> so easy to use, too. I mean, I don't care if it had a clutch also. I, mean, I could still use that. Uh, it's, it's both of them. Exactly right, exactly right. And, that, and uh, the Germans said, you know what the Germans said? No telling. After we stole that from them. I can hear him now. <laughs> so said, you thought we lost the ball? <laughs> <laughs> it was a trick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if Hitler had asked for the demonstrants to be moved, we wouldn't have had all that fussing and fighting. That's what it was <laughs> all about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, 1-800-572. Hey, good question, Diddy. I hope somebody will answer that 
closer than I did. 1-800-572-8255. Jump in here and join us on all the wonderful Fun Seekers Radio Network. Join us. Hey, when was the last time you took a look at the official Fun Seekers Network website? That long ago, huh? Well, get over to it right now. Go ahead. I'll wait. <laughs> Got it? All right, now click on the landing page logo, and, and what do you see? Yep, it's change, hadn't it? Well, we kept hearing about change, you know, change this and change that, so we're just doing what we were told, following directions. So, yes, www.funseekers.net has changed. But don't worry, we'll soon give you a place to vote online for which design you prefer. But uh, while you're on the site, you can get the information about our friends at the Blue Willow Inn and Air Train Airways. There's a list of radio affiliates and a bunch of other stuff. And, heck, you can even find out how to get squirrels out of your attic. Well, maybe. Yes, they say change is good, so www.funsecrets.net has changed. Come to think of it, if change is so good, why not just change it back? One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. Let's go to Winder, Georgia, and talk to my friend Homer on the radio. Good morning, Homer. How you doing? I'm fine. How you doing, Ludlow? I'm doing good, buddy. Just wanted to say that I had a '72 Chevelle, and it had the dimmer switch and floorboard. Okay, did it now? Okay. And that's all I got for you. All right. Well, that's good. You take care. You too. Bye bye. '72 Chevelle on and still in the floorboards. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, it, we tra- obviously, we're still there in the 70s then. Yeah. We're tracking that down. Somebody, you know, all, all we need to do is get some Pontiacs and Firebirds and <laughs> see when they <laughs> Oh, I'm a little jealous of 72 Chevelle, by the way. It yeah. is one of those that I'm thinking about. It'd be a pro- I remember the pretty car. Pretty car. What's the, what's the one that the uh, Choo Choo Man's going to give you? Well, he's got a four door version of a Chevelle, and I'll figure out what your model it is. You know, mm-hmm. he'd been. Uh, him and hawing around about that for years now. I let well, me pick him, pick that up, and get it out of his way. Yeah, because he's sitting in the, you know. Yeah, I mean, I bring him a storage building. He's, he's using it for storage. Well, I bring, I bring <laughs> him, that's just what I mean. I bring him like one of them storage sheds. You oh, know? Yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, and, and assemble it for it. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't see how he could beat that. Yeah. <laughs> so we we know we got him as far as seventy two. Yep. And uh, somebody else out there can. See that 72 and race them two years, I bet you. <clears throat> Excuse me, my frog is back this morning. Uh, I, I got—I don't quite have a cold. <laughs> I know I'm you a, gave it to me. <laughs> I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, a border, I'm a borderline cold guy, Uh-oh. but uh, but uh, but that's all right. That's the, I don't care. But uh, no, I, you know, people don't know how rarely we see each other. I know it's been several yeah. months actually. Yeah, and when it comes to giving each other colds, we used to do that. Well, apparently, we did it electronically this time. Yeah, telephonically maybe. Yeah, well, it'll be better. All right, one eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. The tallest cowboy, the shortest cowboy, best bought milkshake, best washer. Anybody got a washer that's older than twenty one years? I like to hear it. Automatic washer. I don't mean a wife. <laughs> The uh, first homemade ice maker. About when did that come out? Somebody know it? <clears throat> That's apparently a pretty well kept secret. Nobody seems to know about that. Uh, air conditions for the car. We don't. We don't have anything solid on that yet. And we, we th- I think we know on the, on the motorcycle who invented the motorcycle. Daimler, because of uh, where, where the answer came from. Sandra is never wrong. She is like a machine when it comes to that. And in what country? I've narrowed it down. What country invented toothpaste? Isn't that unusual? <laughs> and uh, first commercial deodorant, we got that one covered. It was in the 1880s, I think, and Mum. And Mum lasted all the way. I don't know if the same same product, but the same name lasted all the way, to, at least into my childhood. All right, give us a call, 1-800-572-572. 8255, Ludlow and Denny, the Fun Seekers Radio Network. Some rain due in here, they tell me, this afternoon, and it's going to last about three days. So 
Uh, I was supposed to have dinner Saturday night in a big tent, didn't he? <clears throat> and I can I, I hope it's I hope it's not raining. It, they won't let you go inside the restaurant. <laughs> no, in, so, <laughs> in a big tent. Then you know me. I'm just do as I told. Well, yeah, do as you told. And you ain't gonna wait in the line. Yeah, I, and, I, and, I, and I was I was invited. So oh, that's different, right? Yeah, it is. It is different because I'll leave if I get there and find out it's a wet tent. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. We're gonna have more conversation. Right after this, stay with us. He was short and fat and rode out of the west with a Mogan David on his silver vest. He was mean and nasty right clear through, which was kind of weird because he was yellow too. They called him Irving. Big Irving, Big Short Irving, Big Short Fat Irving, the 142nd fastest gun in the West. Uh, Big Irving, 1-800-572-8255. Go to Somerset and talk to Bruce. Hello, Bruce. How you you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Uh, I was wanting to talk to you about the... Air conditioned cars. Uh, Good. I don't. I didn't get to hear all of your show this morning. I don't know what the other folks have said about air conditioned cars, but I have a 1953 Olds 98 that has factory air on it. Uh huh. And I've tried to get on the internet and research that a little bit to see if I could uh, find out what well, the earliest models uh, came out with the air conditioning. Well, let me tell you what, what what we found out this morning. We got a tie. Oh yeah. Part of the people are saying it was a Nash in in uh, 1937. 37. And some people say it was a Packard in 1937. Well, it was out a whole lot earlier than I ever thought then. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, this car I have, uh, <clears throat> it's got the compressor and that all in the uh, on the engine compartment, but the air conditioning is actually in the trunk. Right. And uh, it has tubes that come up through the uh, rear window. And that goes into the ceiling of the car. Right. Your, your air conditioning comes out at. That's a pretty nice car. Tell me what it is again. It's a old uh, 98, a 1953 model. Oh, boy. Uh, a lady that uh, lived up the street where I grew up, she she uh, was a single woman, never did marry, and uh, she was a professor at the University of Kentucky, and she had her a chauffeur that drove her back and forth from uh Garrett County to Lexington to the college, and she got her a newer model car there after she uh, finished with her olds, and she parked that thing in a in a garage there at her home, and I was mowing a, a lot that she had, and uh, I saw that car. I was getting old enough to be close to driving age, and oh, well, that was uh, your dreams come true, my man. <laughs> I mowed I mowed a lot for three years to to get that car. That was how the, how we traded the for the car. <laughs> wow, what a story! What a story. What's that thing worth today? You think, Bruce? Well, uh, it's actually been sitting in the in a field for a pretty good while, and uh, I had some kids. They got rough with it there a couple of years ago. Uh, I can't say exactly what it'd be worth. It's got yeah. a lot of sentimental value to furbished stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's expensive though. I I did that to a Jeep, and that, that that's expensive. Yeah, I'm not the best mechanic myself. I'd have to mm, yeah. have it done by somebody else, and that's when that's when it really gets expensive. <laughs> it really does, it really does. I uh, I found out about that Jeep. I could have done a lot with that money, but I but I got something now that's worth a lot of money. I think, and uh, yeah, <clears throat> and I and I keep it under lock and key. Yeah, because I, I, people just like to sit in those things, leave it outdoors. They're going to ruin it for you. I believe if uh, the car manufacturers that are having so much trouble wanting to make a comeback, if uh, if they would put that uh, dimmer switch back in the floorboard, then uh, and I've always thought if they came out with a car that they could call the Optiontino, where you had the option of having it on the uh, steering column or in the floorboard, <laughs> have your uh, have your gas uh, either on either side where you can fill them up on either side of the car. I think they'd get a lot of sales just 
just from those two items right there. You know what else I would recommend to them if they're going to come out with an old car to new? I'd recommend a new car with a rumble seat. New car with a rumble seat. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> It'd be a throwback, that's for sure. All right, big boy. <clears throat> All right, good talking to you. You take care of yourself. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. What? One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. Let's go to Jasper, Georgia, and talk to my friend Jimmy. Hello, Good Jimmy. morning, Ludlow. Ah, uh, buddy, how you doing? I'm doing great. Wanted to talk to you about the shortest cowboy. I don't know if it's been mentioned or not, but you remember Bob Steele? Yeah. He yeah, was I'm, short. Yeah, he, I got him in the bottom three. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, <laughs> he was he was short. Alan Ladd was very yeah. short, and. Uh, and James Cagney was kind of short. I think James Cagney was probably taller than both of them, but he was a short guy. Right. And I'll tell you one more that uh, people may not realize, but Lash LaRue wasn't that big either. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he wasn't a big man. Yeah. No, not at all. But, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of an old B-movie buff, and, and uh, when I, I just turned it on and heard, I said, well, I don't know if anybody's mentioned it or not, but I just want to talk about uh, I thought Bob Steele was one of them. Yeah, he got to be one of them because he was he was a little bitty guy. Did right. you know he Did you know he had a twin brother? No, uh, I didn't. Yeah, they made a movie together one time. His daddy was a, a old time movie director or producer, one or the other. Oh, and I'm they, sorry. And they made a movie together one time. Yeah. All and right. They, all right, big boy. Well, good talking with you, Ludlow. Glad to see you. I'm glad to talk with you, and I've been listening to you for years. All right. Well, you stay with us. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. Take care now. Bye-bye. All righty. 1-800-572-8255 is our number. Uh, maybe we're tired of talking about this. What do you think? The tallest cowboy, the shortest cowboy, best bought milkshake. Let's talk to Colquitt, Georgia, and my buddy, B.B. Hello, B.B. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning, sir. Are you doing everything all right at your house? Yes, it is. Good. Just work, spring, spring cleaning, spring cleaning. <laughs> work you to death. Yeah, I know it. I know it. What's on your mind? Now, this, I don't know, but our neighbor, in 1958, he bought a new Edsel. And he said, now I'm just going by what he said, it had air conditioning, it had everything. He said that was the first one like that they had made now. That's just, I'm going by what he said. It you was know, the first time they made the Edsel, but it, it wasn't the first air conditioning. Oh, you do, do, oh, you won the first air conditioning. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What, was that the first time they made the Edsel? That's the first, first, that's the first Edsel, yeah. Oh, okay. And almost the last. I don't know how long. <laughs> they, they didn't make them long, a couple yeah, of years. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I, thought, I, I always thought that was a pretty car. Well, yeah, it was odd, though. It, we was all wanting to ride in it, but... It was different from everybody else on the road, hanging. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the reason. But, All right, my love, I appreciate the call. You take care of well, yourself. Well, listen, listen. The, yeah. best, the best milkshake is at Crystal Hamburgers. I don't eat the hamburgers, but I love the milkshake. Me too. Milk Crystal's good, good, good one. And, and my, I like my son has a dryer that's over thirty years old. And he's still using it. All right, bless him. I, I gotta go. Take uh, care. All right, bye. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. We'll be right back. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five to go to Thompson, Georgia. Talk to my friend Jimmy on the radio. Hello, Jimmy. Good morning, little dog. How you doing, buddy? Oh, doing everything peachy down this week. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> A little cooler than it was yesterday. 
Yeah, it's going to get cooler than that tomorrow, yeah, I think. Yeah, But let the rain come. We need it. Oh, boy, yeah. Well, uh, it'll, be, it'll be a good shower. Oh, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, on the washing machine, I've got a Kenmore that's 20 years old. And yeah. Never had any work done to it. That's an amazing thing, the way they build those things. Are, are, that's, that's two over 20 years old, 21. That's mm. neat. And uh, Ronald Reagan, wasn't he, wasn't he better than six foot, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. And so was uh, uh, Clinton. Yeah. He was, I, think, I think both of those folks are about 6'2", <laughs> yeah. I think. And you remember Jock Mahoney? Oh, yeah. Wasn't he <laughs> pretty tall? I don't know. You know, he was a, more of a stuntman than he was an actor. He was a yeah. stuntman for years before anybody ever heard his name. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was a tall guy. I think. I don't think he was. I don't think he's as tall as Lyndon Johnson or, Prince, or Lincoln. No, but he was tall. Yeah. I'm talking about on the Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, is uh, Jim Arnaz? He's still the tallest, ain't he? I think so. If he yeah. if he's not, I, I mentioned another one I thought was almost as tall as he was, uh, Rod Cameron. Yeah, <clears> yeah, <throat> I yeah. Him. yeah, yeah. You he know, was pretty he, tall. You know, he died over here in Gainesville, Georgia, buried uh, over there. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, I was, he was a good one. I always liked him. He played in the played in the Technicolor things, you know. Yeah, yeah. He was a good uh, good actor. Yeah, I liked him. And uh, I can remember m- mother w- using mom children back in the 30s and 40s. Yeah. Coming in a, in a, a little old flat-looking jaw. Exactly right. I remember the same thing at my house. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I wish they'd put that demo switch back in the floorboard where it belonged. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it sure would help the stock market, I believe, if they did that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's about it for me, Ludlow. All right, big boy. You take care of your bad self. You too, and I hope all the wackos are doing all doing good. Uh, as far as I know, they, none of them in jail this week, so we're, <laughs> uh, we're in good shape. Okay, well, that's good. All right, boy. Take I'll see you later. Take care, Jim. Bye. Bye-bye. one 800 572 I don't reckon any of the uh, uh, any of them in jail. Didn't we hear about any wacko being locked up this week? Uh, yeah, all decent people, they uh, need to be free. one 800 Let's go to Somerset, Kentucky, and talk to Big Bob. Hello, Big Hey, Ludlow, how are you? I'm fine, big boy. How you been? I've been fine. Good. You know, got strawberries on the hill and rain for the rhubarb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I did a little research on the computer listening to your show. Okay. And and the tallest cowboy they're claiming for movies and stuff was James Arness. He was six oh, okay. foot seven. Yeah. I don't doubt that for a minute. Uh, I, I just wondered how big Rod Cameron was, because he was a great big guy, too. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay, uh, well. We, the, we other went, thing I, the other thing I looked up was air conditioning. Chrysler developed the first air conditioner and had the first air conditioning building. They're building in Manhattan and had air conditioning in the Pullman cars in 1930, but they were not the first to have it in a car. Uh, mm-hmm. Pat. Packard had it in 1940, and Cadillac had it in 1941. And I, I have a, somebody said that, uh, that Nash had it in 1937, and we also got a, a 37 listing for the Packards, too. <laughs> well, this is the only thing I saw, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, that. It's, fun, it's fun to learn and to research. I oh, yes, it is. Yes, I it is. Yeah. All I'm right, saying, well, listen, I'll let you go, buddy. Okay, my man, you take care of yourself. Call us again right. and take I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five Ludlow and Denny and we'll both be right back. Stay with us. How are you doing? Good. Pretty good. I don't know what orthodontist, but <laughs> all right. <laughs> but doing pretty good. Um we I have a washing machine that's twenty seven years old and still Well, is. what kind is it? It's a G. A 27-year-old GE, why? Wow. Yeah, I actually, I just took it out of my house about a month, well, less, about three weeks ago, and got me a new one, but just because of the fact that uh, I'm tired of pulling the stuff out of it. <laughs> so I got one of the front-loading ones. 
Well, but you're entitled. Go run, and so we're giving it to somebody. <laughs> good for good for you. That a lot of young people would like to have that to start their start their new house off with. That's nice. Nice to know. That's right. And when we were younger, we had a '57 Chevy mm. that we used to have to. Uh, my brother, I one would have to sit in the floorboard and pull the little thing on the gas tank because it would always fall down. So every time we'd stop at a red light, we'd have to. One of us had to sit down there and fix the little hook, so the gas, so they could pump the gas. <laughs> and those are a lot of memories. And we, yeah, we that was a, a fifty. That was a fifty-seven car. Yep. Okay. Yep. And we had a sixty, uh, sixty-eight Mustang at one time. I wish I had that car. Yeah, but nice car. Nice yep. car. Yeah. Well, thanks. Well, go on to the dentist. I'll talk to you later. All righty. Bye bye. Bye bye. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. Gentleman Jim Clip, waiting to talk on the hey, air. Man. Hello, how you doing? Well, I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? Ah, uh, couldn't be better. Couldn't be good. better. Good. Good. I like it. Uh, tall Cowboys left Minton Sterling Hayden. Yeah, he's big too. Big guy too. I uh, I don't have any idea how tall he was. I bet six. I bet six four or something like that. Big guy. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't as big as he was tall. He was, uh, yeah. I uh, saw him in a picture with uh, John Crawford. And the first time he got to kiss her was at the end of the movie. And he had to bend down and she had to raise his way up to uh, get to kiss <laughs> You know, he's kind of an interesting guy. He's kind of a, uh, a guy that has taken the opinion that He's his own band. He was uh, in a divorce involving, I don't know who his wife was at the time, but they were asked custody of his two children. And before the verdict came in, he just put them on his boat and sailed away. <laughs> <laughs> Went to the South Pacific. Oh, I guess I, don't, I, I, I don't, assume he stayed. I don't know what the outcome of that was, but... Uh, but I think I think he he might have won his point. <laughs> yeah, uh, now they call him a kidnapper. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Put out a special bulletin. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, probably a child molester too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back about twenty years ago, I was. Parked at the doctor's office waiting on my wife, and the fellow parked next to me in a limousine. And we both got out to smoke, and we got talking. And he had uh, been a professional chauffeur all his life. He told me about he had a, they had a 1934 Packard that the first thing he'd done every morning was to go get 50 pounds of ice to put in a special ice box. That uh, the fan blew on and blew cold air out in the car. Uh, homemade, yeah, good. Yeah, it wasn't homemade. It was, it was uh, factory made that way. Uh, I mean, I know that, but it, but it wasn't uh, automatic. It wasn't the kind of air no, conditioner no, no, we're no, used to. No, no. I, mean, I imagine it was effective. Oh, sounds like it would be, yeah. To, yeah, if you can, till the ice melted. If you could control it, well, yeah. you know, in, in the shade, it'd probably last all day, 50 pounds. Uh, you know, a 50-pound chunk, not chips. Yeah, I got you. Okay. I, I don't uh, know anybody who drives in, I don't know anybody who drives in the shade all day, do you? <laughs> no, but, you know. Uh, I got your point. I, I was being I sarcastic won't, I won't with you. I won't like it, it. Thank you. And, <laughs> That's the first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just argue when I'm right. <laughs> uh, you just argue when you got breath. Yeah, well, that helps. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, 1961, there were several dealers giving away an Edsel when you bought another car. <laughs> Really? <laughs> that's funny. That, right. You talk about right. you talk about that's like having too many Christmas trees, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I 
Uh, my, my older brother got in on it. He uh, bought a, a pole with it. It wasn't a new one. They, they just throwed it in the axle. <laughs> and so, well, you know, that I don't, that's a shame about that car, because I thought they were doozies, and, uh, but I never owned one. I don't know. They must have been something. That, they were pretty cars, but they must have been something about yeah. the way they operated. Uh, trouble in the motor. Well, either that. Yeah, either that or they were too close to the, too close to the mercury in price, you know, and folks were probably th- the thinking might have been for a hundred dollars more I can have a mercury type. I don't know. No, nah, well, you never but know, never but know. But they were, in, they were in competition with themselves. Ford was with that car. Because we thought they looked good. Uh, it didn't mean everybody did. Yeah, plus standing right in front of them, it looked like they'd just been goosed. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> some anyway. days, Jim, you're just no. F- some days you're just no fun, Jim. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> can't get a can't get a single argument out of me, can you? <laughs> well, that's all right. I'll say something on the air in the next few days that you'll disagree with. I promise you. Okay, we'll we'll make up for it. Uh, tomorrow's a, all right. Tomorrow's a free day. I'm not grabbing anything, man. I will. Uh, exactly right. <laughs> I don't. Uh, <laughs> all right, right, big boy. Uh, Try right. to behave. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. Jim Clip, one of my favorites because he's got opinions on everything. I mean, most of them are wrong, but he has opinions on everything. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Danny Angel with I got some new friends. Yes, World Toyota Scion of Atlanta. Annual March Mania event is going on right now with three thousand new Toyotas on sale with the ridiculously low payments and prices. And 0% financing is available on some models. There's also a huge selection of used vehicles priced under $10,000. Now, i got to tell you, these folks are just decent, honest, professional people from top to bottom and sideways. I mean, I trust them, and so can you. Royal Toyota Scion of Atlanta. Once you take advantage of this huge March Mania event going on right now, you can visit them online at www.worldtoyota.com. It's the same thing I did after I shopped all over the place for a vehicle, I went to World Toyota Scion of Atlanta and just recently bought a brand new 2009 Toyota Camry. Take my word for it. These are good people here. World Toyota Scion of Atlanta, Peachtree Industrial Boulevard. Visit them. They say it's all right. They say it's all right. Say it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right. Whoa, it's all right. 1 800 572 8255, Gainesville, Florida. And my buddy Lloyd is standing by. Hello, good, Lloyd. Good morning, Dr. Porch. Uh, good m- morning, big boy. Enjoy, enjoying the show as usual. Before I forget, Rod Cameron. Yeah. He came to our house when I was a kid. Did he really? He sure did. I was 10 years old. That's when my daddy was a county court clerk here in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Uh-huh. And he came to Oak Ridge for, Rod Cameron came to Oak Ridge for some reason, but we took a picture of him with my communist sister and one of her little girlfriends. <laughs> he was a big guy. Yeah, he was a big guy. Big man. Yeah. And my, my mother made fried chicken for, for lunch or for whatever for him. Yeah. And uh, he said, I'm so glad you made fried chicken. He said, all I get is steak. <laughs> And he said, I'm so sick of steak, I could just spit. But anyhow, and he ate uh, fried chicken with a heck of a fine guy. Gave us, uh, gave me a, a silk scarf that uh, he signed and so forth, but just, just a real friendly, real nice man. Uh, I've got, he, was, he was one of these guys that was an artist with a welding tool. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh, right. Made little figures. Uh-huh. And he was over in Gainesville, and he listened to me every day that he, he said, and uh, we had a mutual friend who he gave these two of these little creatures with, to, to give to me, and I got them on a shelf in my in my den right this minute. I'm sure, I'm proud of them. 
right. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. in fact, when I was, I was in elementary school, when he came here, I was only 10 years old. Yeah. And the kids at school said, I don't believe Rod Cameron didn't come to your house. So I brought the pictures <laughs> and showed them, buddy. I said, hey, I got, I got the proof, big boy. Yeah. Washing machines. We just retired our Sears Kenmore. We bought them. Wash, you know, how, how you used to buy the washer dryer combination thing, you know, they, yeah. you know, you could buy both of them for a hundred, bought them in Pensacola, and we just retired the dryer, uh, and I, when I put it out there by the road, uh, the, the, uh, guy said, guy said, well, that's an old one, didn't even have a date on it. I said, yes, and we, we got two more payments on it, and it'll be done. <laughs> and an ice maker, the yeah. oldest ice maker in our house was me. <laughs> yeah, when you were a kid, did you hate did you hate those cubes uh, that you had to drop all over the floor? Those... Well, well, see, my brother my brother was nine years older than me. See, and what he'd do, he'd come make him a big glass of iced tea, and he'd leave one ice cube in the ice tray. <laughs> right? You could tell a big brother every time, can't you? And and you know we had the water jug in there. You know, see, a cold drink of water. Yeah. And Mama said, never drink out of that jug. Well, you know, no, yeah. there's crumbs floating around in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, who did that? I don't know. If, you know wasn't it, if it wasn't anybody in that kitchen but you, that's why you had your drink. Lord like, have mercy. And, yeah. and a jug of milk. Hey, I ain't going to dirty no glass. <laughs> I can tote that thing. I didn't, that ain't a problem at all. I'm yeah, telling you. Prove it once and for all that little boys are sorry and no account. And, you know, one, one, one quick thing. You know, we were talking about the phone yesterday. Yeah. What I loved, uh, what I worked at an office complex, and there was a payphone right across the street. That's when they used to have payphones. And drunks would drive, would ride, walk by there. It's near this drunk place. Yeah. And I I got that phone number. So I'd wait till I almost got there, and I'd start calling that payphone. And get him on that phone. <laughs> Is John there? No, man. You know, you know, and you just really razzing good, you know. That's funny. I know what it is, but they got caller ID. You got to watch out anymore. Well, listen, Ludlow, love, love you. Listening to you on the computer, of course, in Florida. Loving all my wackos. All right, big boy. They love you too. You take care of yourself. Have a great day. Hang in there. Bye bye. Choo choo man in Dallas, Georgia is on hold. Hello, Choo. Hello, Ludlow. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right, Luddy. Yeah. You're talking about the Edsel. Yeah. Now, I think the Edsel was probably overpriced. Is is uh. Uh, reason for its failure. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't no better than, than the Ford. It wasn't as good as the Ford. And and it's a lot more expensive a car. I didn't know that. I didn't know what they cost. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I never... I don't remember but one fella having one in Dallas. But yeah. uh, uh, he, was, he was proud of it. Yeah. But uh, they, didn't, they didn't last too long. A couple of years was about it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and washing machines. I've got the oldest washing machine story. Uh, I've heard a lot of them this morning. Well, better tell it quick. Cause it... Uh, all right. It, it, it wasn't, a, wasn't an automatic washer. Uh, mother, Rin- got, mother got a, a hand-wrenching uh, uh, washing machine in the, in, in the early 40s. Oh boy, and and that washing machine is still still around. I mean, I mother gave it away, <laughs> and this woman's got it in her antique room, <laughs> or had it in her antique room. She's passed away, but as far as I know, it's still it, the the antique room is still there. I'll be done. It's got I'll a done. bunch of antiques in there, but that that washing machine's probably probably a forty one. Who who made that? You know, I I have no idea. Mother bought it from a salesman that come come by. Uh huh. You know, out they used to travel through the country, and she was the only one that I know of it had one. But it you'd uh, you'd uh, ring. It had a ringer on it. You have to do it by hand. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, of course, uh, another a ringer or some way that you you scrub the clothes with. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go, Chew. Good story, buddy. Take care of yourself. Have a good one, lady. I'll talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We'll be right back. Stay with us. And it was simple and good back then. Walking in the sand, hand in hand, never thinking that it could end. Digging our love with the moon above at the driving picture show. It 
with burgers and fries and cherry pies in a world we used to know. Burgers and fries and cherry pies. Oh, it was so simple back then. Let the Port Show on the Fun Seekers Radio Network. Let the show brought to you in part by World Toyota Scion of Atlanta and by the Blue Willow Inn. The toll-free lines are now open at 1-800-572-TALK. That's 1-800-572-8255. And now, here's the Port Show. All right. Thank you, Denny, and welcome back, gang. We're glad you're still with us having a good time. We're going to uh, we're going to do this. We're going to open this thing up. Uh, you can still talk about our first topic if you want to. Tall cowboys, short cowboys, what have you, or anything else you want to talk about. So jump in here and join us. Go to Thompson, Georgia, uh, home office of the Ryman Clown. Hello, big boy. How Good you doing? Morning. Good morning, Uncle Letty. Good morning to you. First of all, I'd like to say I got plenty of time to talk, so I promise not to rush you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You were talking about milkshakes. I got a little story about milkshakes. Uh, good. Uh, I've told you before, my sister's 11 years older than I, so she was courting when I was in kindergarten or thereabouts. Yeah. And so she would use those chocolate milkshakes. We had a uh, a new drive-in to open up uh, along about that time in 1963 called Kent's Drive-In, and she and her boyfriend would promise to bring me a a milkshake if I just get out of sight and leave them alone. And they disappear, yeah. You know what? It worked. <laughs> you were talking about ice uh, trays, and I was, as I was thinking about uh, about that, I opened the drawer and pulled out a little tool uh, that had to be used on those ice trays. And I bet uh, most every kitchen in the Southland has got one in a drawer. Or, or had one, yeah. And, and it's... It's made pretty heavy duty, and it's got two little curled up ends. I remember using it uh, years ago as a little boy. Me too. And then under the bottom, it's got a, a bottle opener to open yeah. the Coca Colas with. But I also remember some some uh, other ice trays that were, I guess, made much cheaper, and, and they were they had the handle made on the yeah on the thing, but they were. Uh, what I remember about them, they were just made out of such light aluminum, so it didn't take nothing to bend those handles, and, you know, they weren't. No, you remember the plastic ones? Plastic yeah, ice yeah, trays I do just, remember those, but. Just twisted the whole thing, and it, that, I, hated, I hated them all. <laughs> yeah, they came about kind of later on. I don't think we ever had any of the plastic ones. Yeah. Got a little rhyme for you since you opened the line up. All right, good. It's called Life's Journey. Life is but a trip you take, day by day. You'll be judged by the difference you make as you travel life's way. Did you call someone to laugh or smile? Maybe you patted them on the back. Perhaps you went that extra mile or made use of your distinctive knack. Have you spoken a kind word, cheered some poor soul? Did you stop to notice the hummingbird? Have you made love your goal? Did you learn from your mistakes, repent of your sins? Those bad habits, did you forsake? Are you proud of where you've been? We've all fallen short, it says so in the book, but we can still do our very best. Perhaps we gave more than we took. Well done, my child, you passed the test. Oh, nice stuff. Nice stuff, yeah, love that. Well, it's good to talk to you, Lynn. All right, good to hear from you always, buddy. You take care of yourself. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 1-800-572-8255 is our number. 
Ludlow and Denny, and we have opened this thing up, gang. We'll talk about anything that is on your mind, so jump in here and join us. Easy to find us, 1-800-572-8255. Ludlow and Denny, and both of us are having fun now. We'll be right back. How clean is your tap water? Well, according to recent news reports, the water right out of your tap may contain levels of prescription drugs, recycled sewage, and other chemicals that are just bad for you. Some get filtered out, some don't. Now from Aquasana, there's a new way to get great tasting and guaranteed healthy drinking and bathing water for your entire house for less than $800 with a whole house water filter system. When you shower and bathe in clean water, you'll notice softer skin and hair in one week guaranteed. Learn how you can have clean, healthy water for your entire house for less than $800 or 12 easy easy Equal payments. Call today and save $200. Call 800-989-0816. 800-989-0816. 800-989-0816. Or visit showerfilter.com. All right, 1-800-572-8255. Let's talk to A.J. calling today from Spencer Tracy, South Carolina. Hello, A.J. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. Nice day for something. It is for a fact. <laughs> it's going to get rainy and cool again. But I'm afraid it's going to be our last gas there, Pap. Yeah, well, maybe so. Maybe so. We'll see. Yeah. Then it's going to be just sweating hot before you know it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. But anyway, that's how it is, isn't it? But, yeah, we, we got the, we got spring in front of us, you know, and that spring is not usually very hot around here. Nah, it's my but time it, here. Maybe, maybe, yeah, it's all right. My birthday's the first full day of spring. Not the first day of spring, but the first full day. All right. So it's coming up right around the corner. I'll be another year older, and I feel it. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, you was talking about cowboys earlier? Yeah. Um, wasn't John Wayne's first name Marion? Yeah. Is that his real name? Right, uh-huh. I was telling Miss Fortune that one of our preachers had uh, a mentor in South Carolina that was a football coach and his name was marion he uh -huh. said you didn't call him nothing but bull <laughs> <laughs> you know, on the to only on the tonight show one night johnny carson asked john wayne anybody ever called you marion and he said one guy did <laughs> <laughs> I, I would imagine so yeah yeah well, that's how this guy was apparently and nobody didn't call him nothing but bull. Bull. <laughs> Real deep voice. But anyhow, you know, Clown was talking about them ice cube trays. Yeah. Those old knuckle busters. Yeah. <laughs> well, them things were awful. The metal ones, if you filled them up too full, it took Hercules to pull that lever. Yep, yep. They were, they were just bad, and you'd drop them on the floor. It's awful. It was just awful. <laughs> they were a bane to a man's existence. <laughs> exactly. It was a blessing when they come out with them plastic things. A blessing when they come out with that that automatic ice maker. I love that. <laughs> In the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. Oh, uh, that's progress. Yep. Your heater's leaking. I said, you're what? And she said, you're hot, my hot water heater. I said, hon, there ain't no such thing as a hot water heater. <laughs> If the water was hot, it wouldn't need heating. It's a cold water heater. Is that a uh, is that a former customer? <laughs> no, no, that's, that's a customer. That's that's one of my pet peeves. Word police things, though. There ain't no such thing as a hot water heater. Yeah, well, that's right. But that's 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 true. Well, let me give you a couple thoughts for the day. All right, do it. And I like clown's poem there. That was right good. It was very good. Yeah. What? Here we go. When it's hardest to pray is when you should pray the hardest. Who? <laughs> Great. Uh, and the dollar you haven't got today, 
ain't worth as much as it used to be. (laughs) 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 This goes along with your mule going blind. Yeah. Thing. Don't worry about the potholes. Just enjoy the journey. Very good. Very good. If we if we could do that, our lives would be happier, wouldn't it? Oh, I believe it. <clears throat> Everybody'd be better off. Yeah. Well, anyway, I just want to give you them today and check in. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you did. Uh, you've been hunting this weekend or not? I mean, fishing. No, we went fishing last weekend. Yeah, I told Betty on the. Uh, we went caught a few crappy. All right, good. Well, that's good. I tried out my new assault rifle that I bought. What, did you kill some trees down there? <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what we did. We take <laughs> those pine beetle killed pine trees, and we set four four-by-fours four in the ground and then use that for a rack and pile them trees up in it for a back yeah. to shoot into. Very good. And Very good. We got a new uh, AR-15. It's only a twenty-two. you know, it's a two twenty-three. Real small caliber, but boy, that thing's fun to shoot. Yeah, they are fun to shoot. It's small. A twenty two's fun to shoot, yeah. Yeah, but this one here, it'll, it's dead on at 250 yards. <laughs> oh, really? At 100 yards, you can put five bullets in a one-inch circle, no Atta problem. boy. Atta boy. <laughs> so we're going to shoot some coyotes with it. And one guy down there gave me a box of bullets for it that he said, you can shoot deer with these, it'll and he said, "It don't tear the meat all up like them." Uh, and, and it might not. It might not kill them too. Don't shoot a deer with that little thing. <laughs> uh, he said they do at his other club. That they, they use these silver tip bullets that just blow up inside them. Uh, he thinks he's a lone ranger, does he? <laughs> <laughs> now, state of Georgia. Now it's legal legal to use any twenty two caliber and up, but it has to be a center fire rifle, not a yeah. real. All right. I got to go, big boy. You take care of yourself. All right. We'll be chatting at you. All right. Look forward to it now. See y'all. All All right, buddy. 1-800-572-8255. More right after these important words. Stay with us. And right now, I need to remind you about Air Train Airways, because you might be one of those people who've been thinking about a vacation, just thinking you cannot afford it. Well, <laughs> we got a surprise for you, because whether you're looking for a day trip, weekend, or week-long trip, Air Train Airways is offering low fares to over 50 destinations. That, of course, will make your vacation possible. And right now, Air Train Airways is having a sale with fares as low as $39. Check out the fares to some of these great cities from out of Atlanta. You can find Las Vegas or San Francisco, each one of those $129 one way. Or Denver, $119 one way. Just remember to book your travel by midnight tonight, but fares are valid for travel all the way through November 4th. And when you get back from that trip, think about a weekend in Branson, Missouri. New Air Trans service begins to Branson on May 11th. Now, blackout dates do apply, but just go to airtrain.com so you'll find out all the information and the lowest fares and no booking fees. Airtrain Airways, go. There's nothing stopping you. All right. Let's talk to my friend Richard in Aragon, Georgia. Hello, Richard. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. Uh, Good. I was wondering if anybody remembered, uh, they was talking about the, the refrigerators, and I was wondering if anybody remembered the, the ice boxes, you know, Duke's Ice Plant was oh, yeah. on uh, West Avenue, and you had to get a block of ice to put in your ice box keep everything cold you know i remember i remember it well and uh and daddy he had the uh in the winter time we didn't have no electricity uh lights or nothing you know or uh, gas or nothing like that and he'd order a a load of slabs and slivers that's stuff you know that's left over from a sawmill yeah, yeah. yeah and order a you know a ton of coal 
you know, and they'd dump it out there in the yard. And, and uh, Mama had one of them old washing machines that you that you'd ring, you know, with your hand, and and the wood stove. She cooked three meals a day on it. <laughs> and had didn't have nothing but a fireplace, and she'd build a fire at night and, and put it out, and then next morning it'd be about froze to death, and she'd start another fire. And yeah, I remember them old days. Yeah, yeah. When every, everybody had an ice box, you know, the, no such thing but ice boxes. No, and uh, I remember the ice. Old, uh, and then after Duke, the uh, old Bruce Love, you know, he was down there at that ice plant. I guess you remember Bruce. And where, where, where's it? Where was Bruce now? Down on West Avenue, down there. No, I don't. Right think, wh- there, about halfway between Main Street and <laughs> where you turn on the curve no. down there. Right no, I don't. Back I'm not sure. Inside the old mill there. Yeah. Okay. I don't know where you are. You, Aaron, Aragon. Yeah, I'm Sir? not. I'm not broadcasting from where you are. I'm in Aragon, Georgia. I know, and I ain't. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm, you take care of yourself. You too. I just thought I'd throw that in there. All right. What? Are you, good call. Take care of yourself. Thank you, sir. Okay, buddy. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. Let's talk to a uh, Lee Roy. Hello, big boy. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I want to tell you a little-known story about John Wayne. All right, good. I read this in a book called John Wayne, American. All right. Did you know that when he was born, and up until he was about five years old, his first name was Robert? No, didn't know that. Okay, I'm fixing to tell you. Oh, no. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> a new a new boy was born like, when he was like five years old. His mother said, from now on, this new kid is Robert, and your name is Marion. Changed his name at five years old. Oh, huh, that's, that's strange. And uh, that's that's what the book says. Well, I believe it if it's but, in the book. Uh, and Robert was never worth killing. John Wayne took care of him all his life, Marion Morrison. Uh, and his mother was a, a complainer. He sent her on a world tour on a ship and whatever, and she complained every minute of the trip. <laughs> nothing, was, nothing was right. And she was that way her whole life. I know some people like that. You do, too. Yeah, well, and he took care of her her, her whole life. Yeah. Marion did. Yeah. And just, but, uh, and I had never heard that story that I read in the book, but his, his name was Robert, and, he, and his brother got the name, and it just was never worth anything. Just, uh, it's a sorry no account. Yeah. Yeah. At least a sorry no account. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we call them. No count rascal. Yep. But and his mother was a, was something else too. A complainer was she? Absolutely, just couldn't, you know, couldn't do I'm, anything to please her. You know, he'd give her anything in the world, and it was it was wrong. Whatever he did was wrong. <laughs> well, that that'll make you grow up. With, if if he was wrong when he was an adult movie star, think about him in a teenager. Well, I'm, now I don't know how it was. I don't remember about the story about his. Yeah. He, you know, he was a football player and all this stuff. Yeah, uh, a star, I think. Uh huh. But and he got the name Duke from his dog. I heard. Right. Uh, but it just after he got well off, he he took care of his mother very well, and but he was never satisfied her whole life. All right. Well, bless her heart. <laughs> and changed his name too. That was that was a bad part to me. That was a bad part. I, there was some folks up the street from us, and I didn't know this till I was grown because they were a lot older than me. That they had a they had a boy named John, mm-hmm. and uh, they they let him pick his own name. They didn't name him at all uh, until he was ten or twelve years old. He picked his own name, picked John. He did. Yeah. Well, Johnny Cash was born with initials. He didn't have a name. He was oh, J yeah. R Cash, I think. I'll be darned. And then when he got in the army, they said you got to have a first name. <laughs> so he picked John or Johnny, you know. All right, big boy, you take care. I'll talk to you All later. Right. Nice you day. Do? Nice day here. Yeah, nice day here. Thank you. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five is our number, and uh, Robert Wayne. That would have been a that would have been a good name.
for a movie star or a cowboy. 1-800-572-8255. Uh, low and Diddy on the Fun Seekers Radio Network. And it's a great day to be alive. Well, the sun is shining. It's high. It's going to be warm. And it's going to bring in a little rain late this afternoon in, in this area, which is uh, uh, northern Georgia. I don't know what it's going to do at your house. When we find out, we'll tell you. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Barking and the day is getting dark. When the night begins to fall, then a dog will lose their bar. Then a silent night will shatter from the sounds inside my mind. And I'm just one too many mornings and a thousand miles behind. I don't understand that song. I think it's all right because Johnny Cash sings it. But I don't understand it. Uh, what? The dogs in my neighborhood don't quit barking at night. I don't understand that. Maybe I'm just not mature enough to understand those kind of lyrics. But I don't. All right, gang, we have an open line. And uh, we, we got, if, you, if you've been wanting to call in, we got room for you right now. So give us a call, 1-800. Five seven two eight two five five, and we'll talk about whatever is on your mind. So you just, uh, if you call in right now, you'll be next. So do <laughs> do that, and we'll see that you get on the air pretty quick, pretty quick. But uh, if, if you got some kind of appointments you got you got to take, you, you don't have to call. So we understand appointments. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five is our number. Uh, beautiful day, bright. Bright, bright skies around here. I don't. Uh, I like it when we got a little clouds because I can leave my blinds open, and that uh, takes care of my view. But when the, when the sun is out, uh, there's, there's a big glare. So it's a, it's a big window and a big glare, and it fills up the whole room, and you, you can't write and can't see what you have written if you could write. So one eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. We only got one call. It's to, about the, about the Nash. Being in the uh, uh, business of air conditioning cars early, uh, I don't know whether that's a mistake or just error or where it's correct. You know the Nash. If, you, if anybody said remember the Nash, and the only reason I do, because I have a I had an uncle that uh, was really really loved his Nashes. He really he bought the great big Nashes, and uh, uh, that's the first car that I know that both seats. Both front seats rolled all the way down, and you could uh, it, it it kind of performed like making a king size bed inside a car uh, when you when you did that. So that uh, that was subject of a lot of jokes at that time, but a pretty good car I always thought. And uh, my, my uncle loved them, and he had he had two or three, uh, and they stopped, stopped making them. I guess they had difficulty along the way somewhere, and they. And they I think they may have, may have gone with Studebaker. No, Studebaker went with Packard, didn't they? Studebaker Packard, huh? All right. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. Let's go to Cleveland and talk to my friend Robert on the radio. Hello, Robert. Hello, Ludlow. How you doing? I was. Uh, I'm doing good, y'all. Good. Uh, good. I was uh, uh, wondering on this shortest cowboy has uh, Audie Murphy been mentioned? 
No, how tall was Audie Murphy? I don't know. I, well, I don't know either. I mean, I know he's short, but I didn't yeah. know if he was that yeah, short or not. I don't think so. I think he was a kind of middle of the road short, you know, five, five, well, five, six. Yeah, I yeah. think. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not either. I'm not that old. Oh well, but you could. <laughs> you, you all have to read about him. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, that's just what I had. I was just wondering if he had been mentioned. Okay, no, see, I'm in mission, but we thank you for calling. All right, thank you. All right, buddy. Bye, bye. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. As we go to. Jasper, Georgia, Burnt Mountain, if you please, and talk to my friend Betty. Hello, young lady. Good morning, Luddy. Good morning to you. Well, since you're talking about <clears throat> John Wayne, did you know that he was one of the first singing cowboys? Yeah, singing Sandy, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only learned that, uh, well, it's just been since Christmas. My daughter picked up a little book somewhere some Goodwill store or something, singing Cowboy Stars. And yeah. thumbing through that, I was shocked. I did not know he it was. A, he made 16 of those uh, singing Cowboy films. Well, but let me tell you, so the, the funniest part about that is they didn't use his voice. Yes, that's what this little book says. <laughs> that's a controversy, though. <laughs> oh, is it really? Yes, it says that uh, although some film historians have credited Smith Ballou for the vocals in those singing Sandy films, that others uh, dispute that and, and say that it is Big John. I don't and, believe that for a minute. Uh, <laughs> and it, it's as though it, it's unclear, you know, as to how the controversy got started. It's lasted, and so regardless, yeah. John Wayne has left a, a remark. Uh, he's been listed as one of the first singing cowboys and gene autry by the time he had finished those uh, 16 film uh gene autry had come along and so they they had their singing cowboy and they left yeah. him alone but i thought it yeah. was interesting that his wife Pilar, was later quoted as saying that uh, john wayne said he felt like a blankety blank pansy <laughs> <laughs> Can't you just see him saying that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, he he did what what he needed to do to take care of that complaining mother, evidently. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he said one time, I forget where I read this quote, that the best job he ever had was moving uh, things about a, a movie set, just moving things around. Uh-huh. And he he said, if I could make as much money moving things as I could acting, that's what I'd do because I liked it better than acting. <laughs> Isn't that strange? It is, but you can almost relate to that because yeah, uh, that, that was just something that you could do and, and stand on the sideline and observe and not... <laughs> and never have to take on a script, a script at night and memorize it. That must be hard work. Oh, and uh, and the way filming is done, where they do it in bits and pieces, and then put it all together, I don't know how they ever managed to make it uh, make any sense with the the script. Because <laughs> they do do a scene today and a, another scene tomorrow, something like that. Mm -hmm. I'd never be able to do it. And and well, what? It's evidence that he couldn't make enough money doing that. So. He, he continued doing the acting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, what what they try to do is, is once they get the set lighted, that, that takes a lot of time and a lot of trouble. Then they try to shoot all the scenes they can in one day while it's lighted the way it is. That, um, see, that's one of the things my son works is uh, the lighting. And, right. Uh, and it, it, there is so much more goes into lighting and how to light different things and or different ways it's and it's how to light really different intriguing. people yeah, it is and how to light different people and uh if you're doing something outdoors <laughs> it's just tough mother nature's not going to follow any instructions you give her and you can have the best lighting man in the world no. and uh oh, it, tough, I, tough. How they keep from getting electrocuted i don't even like to hear him tell about some of the things they do yeah <laughs> He's got an interesting job. I know he knows that. He's got a very interesting job. Oh, he does. You know, he has he uh, he has a clown license in Russia because of the idea that he came up for lighting the uh, 
ballroom scene in Catherine's Palace because it was so large it just devoured the lighting. And he mm. came up with the idea of using helium balloons to float up and hold the lights up high. But they had to get everything approved, by run everything by the officials, and they buzzed around there, and they finally said he could do it, but he had to, they had to purchase a, a clown license because it was balloons. So he's a card-carrying balloon, a clown in Russia. <laughs> Don't you know it, it was hard to do anything in Russia with those people and their stupid regulations? Everything had to be run through some special something or other. Uh, it, it's very interesting to hear uh, him tell about that experience. That uh, uh, just, just you know, little things. Uh, he to go into a church or a cathedral they were going to light in. They had to go back and be blessed by the uh, whatever <laughs> whatever they were called. I don't know if they were priests or what, but every one of them well, had to go by and pay some money and get blessed. Probably commissars or something. They, uh, you know, they charge you money for taking a camera in there and charge. And uh, if you take pictures, it's more. And it, they, uh, all I can say about the Russians, bad people. They're just bad people. And I don't mean, I don't mean just the government. I mean a government and a large part of their population. I gotta go, Miss Betty. You take your care of your sweet self, and I'll talk to you. I shall, Letty. You do the same. Bye bye. Bye bye. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hey, right now, it's Denny. I need to remind you about our new friends at World Toyota Scion of Atlanta. The annual March Mania event is going on right now with 3,000 new Toyotas on sale with ridiculously low payments and prices. Plus, there's 0% financing available on some models. Now, if you're not looking for a new vehicle but prefer a used vehicle, you'll find one there, a huge selection of used vehicles priced under $10,000. Now, these are some great folks here. I really, really believe they're going to impress you as much as they impressed me. One of the things they offer you, you know, we just bought a brand new car from them, and uh, we're getting ready to go to the new owner seminar, which happens on the third Thursday of every month, and they'll feed us and give us free food and beverages there as they tell us everything there is to know about that high-tech vehicles that you will find today. You know, this is the number one Toyota dealership in the big old town of Atlanta for a couple of months in a row. They've also earned the very prestigious President's Cup Award. You just ask any Toyota dealer about why it's coveted, uh, so coveted, and they'll tell you. And Royal Toyota is the proud uh, owner of such an award. Now, the service department is rated number one also in Atlanta. Service you can trust from professional technicians who know every nut, bolt, and circuit on today's high-tech vehicles. Do the same thing I did. Check them out online at www.worldtoyota.com. Uh, or you look for a link on our website at funsecrets.net to lead you there. And while you're at worldtoyota.com, look at that special price on the loaded Camry. And we're not talking about a stripped-down model, a loaded Camry. That's really going to surprise you www.worldtoyota.com or you can visit them in person at 5800 Peachtree Industrial Boulevard that is uh, about a mile or so from Interstate 285 in Atlanta, Georgia. World Toyota Scion of Atlanta. Trust me when I tell you, you can trust them. Good morning there, little O. How are you doing today? Sound like you got a good program going. We had a, we've had a good one today. We've been getting the calls and well, rocking you along. Are, you all over the place with your topics. Uh, yeah. Uh, two or three things. Uh, somebody called in a while back talking about an Edsel. Yeah. Uh, I read an article in one of the automo- automobile magazines about the Edsel and fairly recently that the problem was there was no niche for the Edsel. It was between the Ford and the Mercury, and there just really wasn't a good market for it back in the 50s. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people, you heard the expression, look like a Ford sucking a lemon. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and the, running, the running gear uh, was derived from one of the two, the Mercury or the Ford. So, you know, and it was a higher price car than a Ford. And uh, so it just it couldn't find a place in the market. Yeah, and that's a shame. That's a shame. Uh, yeah, because if you 
stood back and looked at them. They were a good-looking automobile. Yeah, they were. Yeah, and they had some right innovative uh, ideas. One of the things that they did, they were the first ones to put a uh, push-button transmission in in around the steering wheel. Uh, you know, Chrysler came out with it earlier, but it yeah. was over on the dash. Yeah. But uh, they they had some other good ideas, but they just didn't make it. Uh, I I ain't seen anything like that. You know, that's that's somebody's when they when they make a thing like that, even if it's Ford Motor Company, I hate to see a thing like that fail. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Because dream, it, it yeah, has a negative effect on the market. Uh, yeah, yeah. Also, you would you back a few calls ago. We were talking about a Nash. Uh, mm-hmm. When I was in high school, uh, some of the guys in my class, Daddy had a Nash, and we even had one guy who had his own Nash. And they couldn't get any dates because the mamas wouldn't let the girls go out with them because those seats laid back. <laughs> <laughs> and who could blame them? Who could blame them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> back in the 50s. Things were a whole lot different than they are today. Boy, and, uh, yeah. And then I heard something. You may have already talked about this some time back, but uh, in the in the cowboy movies, they would make a scene as an example uh posse chasing somebody you know and yeah. uh they would use that scene over and over and over in other movies same yeah. same posse and you know and you couldn't see who was riding the horses so uh they they kept just yeah using they, it. they call that they call that stock footage they made a movie uh, about the life of uh, buffalo bill was uh joel mccray and it had a lot of Indian fighting in that movie, uh-huh. uh, and a lot of it in shallow water, like like a big shallow creek. Right. Uh, and I've seen them use those scenes four or five times uh, in other movies. <laughs> Save themselves thousands of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it uh, it did save them a lot of money not having to reset. But anyway, yeah. that's all I had for this morning. Enjoy. Right, call us again. I'll do it. Take call care, us buddy. Again. Right, take care. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. More right after this. Blue willow in. Want you to think about that when the time comes and it's going to come, and you're going to want some good, authentic Southern cooking. Your mind's going to race back to your mama's table. Or your mind's going to race to the the church bazaars and that sort of thing where you got the good fried chicken and everything else at the Blue Willow Inn. Just the way you remember the pork chops, the roast beef, every vegetable on the planet, uh, fish, hush puppies, got the picture, everything. Even got your favorite bread. I mean, from corn from cornbread to to muffins, to, <laughs> they got it. They got it all there. Yeah, go down to the desserts where you're going to find all the desserts, cakes, pies, what have you. And you're also going to find. Uh, the South's favorite dessert, and that's banana pudding. All of that and a lot more at the Blue Willow Inn. Now, if you want to go down there, I advise you to uh, uh, to not eat for about a week or ten days before you go because the folks are going to fill you up. Best place I know, gang, Blue Willow Inn, Social Circle, Georgia. You tell them Ludlow sent you. My mama sat on that old swing with her crochet It was where granddaddy taught me how to cuss and how to pray It was where we made our own ice cream No sultry summer nights Where the bulldog had her puppies And us brothers had our fights There were many nights I'd sit right there And look out at the stars To the sound of a distant whippoorwill or the hum of a passing car And it was where I first got up the nerve to steal me my first kiss And it was where I learned to play guitar and pray I had the gift If the world had a front porch like we did back then We'd still have our problems if the world had a front porch like we did back then, that's a, that's wishful thinking, of course. But that's a what a wonderful idea. Yeah, heck of a thought, ain't it? If there's a thought that would make them 
tear the decks off and put front porches on. <laughs> I got I got an uh, item here, Lud, about a guy who probably should have been thinking a little bit more. Okay. He, he went into uh, uh, Nicholasville, Kentucky. A man demanded the bank's money. Now, this was a month or so ago. Mm-hmm. But he left empty-handed after an employee at the counter informed him that the building is now a regional water district office and not the bank that used to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Uh, <that's, laughs> but you can pay your bill if you want. Yeah, and he just left. That's funny. It is. That is funny. <laughs> well, we, you know, we get right to the dumb criminal things, and uh, uh, something like that's always on top. Of, yeah. Uh, we had a when I, I was in the insurance business for a long time, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and we wrote bonds, and we had a lot of banks, fidelity and surety bonds on, on a lot of banks. Mm-hmm. And so we had to pay for a lot of holdups. Uh, but you get a lot of interesting tales, uh, like uh, two that I that really intrigued me. One of them, the, the, the lady was there, uh, and everybody else had gone to lunch in a small bank in Mississippi, as a matter of fact. Uh-huh. And uh, she, she was left there alone, and the guy came in and said, give me all your money. And she said, listen. I'm here alone. Nobody's going to believe. It's my first day here, my first week. <laughs> Nobody's going to believe uh, that you came in and robbed me. I'm not giving you a quarter. Now, you do what you got to do. And, and he turned around and left. Really? Yeah. And, oh, uh, it's funny. And another one, the guy was there by himself. And I, it, it closed my eyes. I never saw it, but it closed my eyes and pictured this thing. I pictured it with, the, like, the big bars over the counter. Yeah. And they did, did business, through Because that's the way the story sounded. Guy was there almost by himself, or just not not many people there. The guy came in, and right behind the guy was a deputy sheriff. Mm-hmm. So uh, he hollered to the deputy, "This guy's a robber!" And the deputy sheriff jumped him, and they're down on the floor fighting. And uh, the deputy sheriff seems to be losing, so this guy climbed climbed over those bars to help him. And between the two of them, they like to beat this poor guy to death. <laughs> and, he, and he didn't get any money either. <laughs> oh, man, it wasn't his day. <laughs> <laughs> Some days just doesn't pay to rob a bank. No, but, you, but you talk about real, real good. It's literally the, the, the big wheel at, at the insurance company came by my desk. Mm-hmm. I was in the claims. And he said, I want you to buy those two men gold watches. Yeah. And, and give them to them. Yeah. And, and I said, how do you code it on the t- t- Oh, I don't know. Don't bother me with that. He said he was, he was a big boss. So I put him on my expense account. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sizable expense account that month, wasn't it? Yeah, they're still talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dick Big Diddy, I'll see you in the morning, see my you. man. All right. As a matter of fact, I'll see all of you in the morning. Between nine, then do me a favor. Whatever else you do today, you find somebody to be nice to. Love low again. Just can't wait to hear love low again. The life I love is hearing love low with my friend. And I can't wait to hear love low again. Love low again. Just can't wait to hear love low again. The life I love is hearing love low with my friend. And I can't wait to hear love low again. Blood low again That band of wacko goes out on the airway They're the best of friends Insisting that the only way is the fair way And that's why I say Blood low again Just can't wait to hear blood low again The life I love is here in blood low with my friends And I can't wait to hear blood low again no, I 